So I uh, will make a lightning talk about the riding network, um, which uh, is um, something that um, the BrainBot team uh, is working on, uh, of which I'm a member. So essentially, what um, the riding network is, it's, it's trying to, to address some of the main Ethereum problems, which is, well, not only Ethereum, but main blockchain problems, which are, for example, uh, the main one is scalability, another one is uh, finality of transactions, and of course, um, uh, privacy of transactions. The way with which we are trying to do this um, is to use uh, the solution of off-chain transfers. Essentially, we are using um, bilateral transfers between many different nodes that do not need to be on the blockchain, and the blockchain is only a ledger on which the final computations are stored. Um, so the writing network is essentially um, a network that can transfer any assets. Uh, it's uh, inspired and very similar to the Bitcoin Lightning Network. It's developed by, by BrainBot uh, AG, um, uh, two developers of which work in, from this office. Uh, we are uh, a work in progress and we are working towards a minimum viable product at the moment. What are the, the features that Riding has? Essentially, you can transfer any ERC20 compatible uh, token, for example, I don't know, DJX token or uh, MakerDAI. Um, you can have instant asset transfers uh, and micropayments because essentially nothing needs to go in the blockchain unless there is um, um, a challenge. And uh, it can also scale to even 1 million transactions per second because um, it does not need to um, be included in the blockchain unless there is um, a settlement. And transactions are also confidential. How does um, such a network work? Essentially, we utilize something called payment channels. Um, a payment channel in Ethereum would be essentially a smart contract on which a security deposit is given. It can be settled or closed by, um, by any of the two parties. Um, and um, there can be only a challenge period into which um, someone can challenge and get um, the deposit back if, if there is a problem. It looks something like that, for example. There would be a... Um, there will be a contract with a deposit given by both um, uh, participants. It would know the receiver and the initiator address, and um, the, the, the participants essentially sign transactions, but do not put them in the blockchain, but they only keep um, how much uh, of an asset has been spent. They know it, uh, they both know how much they have spent. Um, a bidirectional channel, uh, so channels are bidirectional, and it looks like this. Essentially, there is two deposits inside the, the contract. Um, and each participant has to track both the balances. So Alice and Bob here both track Alice and Bob's respective balances. And the con um, they can spend as much as is the, the deposit uh, inside the contract. And we have um, a net distributable of, of um, the balance of Alice, for example, here in the, in, in the graph. Um, essentially, in order to scale this, there can be many um, channels that are connected. Um, so, in order to scale this into a full uh, network, we have multiple channels that are connected and they mediate transfers between one another. Um, this is what we call a mediated transfer. And essentially, <laughs> if Alice wants to send um, something to um, uh, David, say David, um, it can use uh, uh, Bob and Charlie, but they would need to have um, something called a hash lock to sign to um, sign a transaction with, so that nobody can um, um, look at it uh, unless it has uh, reached uh, the end of of, of, the, of the channel. 
Once uh, the transaction goes to um, to David, then he asks Alice for the um, secret, and it goes backwards, and uh, the transaction um, is uh, finalized. In immediate transfer, it's not to recite a small fee, depending on um, on the distance. That's something that we have not implemented uh, yet, but yeah, that's just how the, the, the idea is supposed to work. Um, so imagine a network of many such channels with uh, routes being found between any of the two participants. Uh, as long as the transfers cancel out, so the deposit is not, um, so the, the, the sum of the transfers is not more than the deposit, the channel can be long lived. So nothing would need to go in the blockchain. Uh, which would result in having a very low frequency of settlements. Uh, that would uh, make everything much cheaper because there would be no gas costs since nothing goes in the blockchain. Um, fast, for the same reason. And there would still be no counterparty risk because the, the transactions actually do exist and they are cryptographically proven and each one depends on the previous one. They just are not put in the blockchain unless there is a problem. Um, there are many applications for such a thing. One example would be a decentralized uh, exchange. For example, if you want to trade two assets, you would need to have a channel open for both of those assets. Um, the initiator would, uh, would um, broadcast the intent. Uh, for example, he would have a bid and an ask for, for, for asset A and asset B. Then interested parties would uh, send an exchange request and the initiator would accept. And the way that this would work is that um, we would essentially have two mediated transfers with the same hash lock, so that once the secret is revealed, and if and only if it is revealed, then either both of the transactions would execute, or, or if um, there is a problem, none of them would be executed. Um, as I said in the beginning, this is inspired by the Lightning Network. Now, if we compare both of them, um, in Ethereum, uh, Ryan has an easy implementation thanks to the virtual machine. Um, if there is an uncomparative participant, the channel is not locked. We just find another um, uh, uh, route. Um, <coughs> if we can add more funds to a smart contract, uh, so the channel can get much more um, funds if needed, if the deposit is not enough. Uh, we can use it for any compatible token with the um, uh, ERC20 um, uh, token proposal. And it's interoperable with smart contracts in general. We can use oracles, uh, anything else you, you may need. Um, the current status is that we have demonstrated uh, 500 transfers per CPU core per second. It's a work in progress. And um, we don't need anything extra added to Ethereum at the moment. We just need to implement it. We don't wait for Metropolis or anything like that. <coughs> um, our milestone is a proof of concept zero. We, we have demonstrated with the testnet a transfer from uh, Copenhagen to Mumbai, mediated by a node in Florianopolis, Brazil. Um, and this happened around August, I think. Um, we're heading towards uh, the minimum viable product, which is the big milestone that we want to come uh, to, that would come out around the beginning of 2017. We <coughs> would like to. Um, if you like Python and you like Ethereum, we would really appreciate the help. Then it's in GitHub. It's Raiden Network slash Raiden. And um, yeah, that's that's all. If you have any questions?